Hello, Open Door, and those that are watching on Facebook or on YouTube, however you're on the internet watching, welcome. God has given me a word today for you. The title of the word that he's given me is, God has a better plan. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created the earth and everything in it for his most cherished creation, man, to live in. Satan and his angels rebelled against God, and they were cast out of heaven, and God created hell for them. They were told that as sure... Okay. Adam and Eve were his creation, and mankind started with Adam and Eve. They were told, as sure as they ate from the tree in the garden, the tree of knowledge and good and evil, that they would die. You see that before they ate from this tree, they were immortal. They were going to live forever. Well... Satan had a plan. He was going to he was going to make man God's most cherished creation. He was going to see him suffer and die. So he talked and talked to Eve and I'm not sure if he talked to Adam. The Bible doesn't say he talked to Adam, but he talked to Eve and we don't know how many years that was. That may have been thousands of years that Satan was talking to Eve, telling her, you can eat from this tree and nothing will happen to you. You will, it will open your eyes. You will be like God. They were already God. They were already like God. God created them, them that way. But they eventually believed what Satan told them. They were told that as sure as they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they would die. But God has a better plan, and I'll tell you that later. The Philistines had a plan to defeat the people of God and enslave them. They sent their giant, Goliath, from God, God to change, not God, but Gad, to challenge the Israelites. I'm going to read you a little scripture today talking about that plan that the Philistines had. In 1 Samuel 17, 4 through 11, the Bible says, And there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out and set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and ye are servants to Saul? Choose a man for you. And let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine says, said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Well, 
God has a better plan. He has David. <clears throat> and I'm going to read you 1 Samuel 17, 31 through 52. This is the plan of God for the Israelites that were again fighting against the Philistines. <clears throat> and when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this circumcised, Phil circumcised Philistine, uncircumcised Philistine, shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor and put on helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. And he took the staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest, with, comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day the Lord will deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David, and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in the forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. 
And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. What I'm saying to you tonight from the Lord is that there might be plans afoot by the devil to defeat you. But the Lord, our God, has a better plan. The Philistines had a plan with Goliath, but God had David, which was a better plan. There may seem to be, I'm not here after we have come together, but I'm here before we have come together. This coronavirus, this COVID-19, may seem like an invisible giant that we cannot overcome, but we do not have to overcome it. We only have to have faith in God, and God will overcome it for us. He has a better plan. Satan has also a plan to keep you and I in the chains of our sins, iniquities, and transgressions. But God has a better plan. He died on a tree so that if we believe him, in him and do three things, we will be free. First of all, we must have faith that he exists and he rewards those who diligently seek him. We must repent of our sins, not just say we are sorry, but do a 180 and change our ways. We must be baptized in his name and we will be filled with his spirit. That is the Holy Ghost. It is his spirit in us that allows us to change our ways and to pursue holiness, to be more like him. I'm going to read you Acts 2.38. This is God's plan for us. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized you, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm also going to read you John 1, 1 through 4, John 1, 14, and Luke 1, 31 through 34. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. You see, God has a plan. He came down and died on a tree for our sins. John 1, 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
Luke 1, 31 through 34. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this thing be, seeing that I know not a man? Well, it was, was the Holy Ghost came into her and put flesh on his spirit. All through Acts, there are five different examples of showing you the plan that God has for us. I'm sorry. All through Acts, there are five different examples of the plan that God has for us, that we have faith in Him, that He rewards those who seek Him diligently, and that we repent of our sins and do a 180 and change our ways. And we shall be baptized in His name and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That gift of the Holy Ghost is what allows us to change. We cannot change by ourselves, but with His Spirit in us, we can change. Now I'm going to read you Acts 19, 1 through 7, which is another example of this. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then Paul, then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost, ghost the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And, about, and all the men were about twelve. So you see, they had been baptized in John's baptism, but they had not been baptized under the name of Jesus Christ, and so they had not received the Holy Ghost. It is key and important to your salvation and my salvation, that we repent of our sins, do a 180 and change our ways, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we shall receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost inside you is what enables you to change. You cannot do it on your own. We just do not have the power to do it. But with the power of Jesus Christ inside of us, we can do this. Whatever storms in life you're going through, remember to keep your eyes on Jesus. Do not look at your storms. If you do, you'll start sinking, as Peter did when he walked upon the water. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
He will get you through this. I didn't say he'd get you around it. I didn't say he'd get you above or below it. He will walk you through this. You will come through it. So don't be dismayed. Keep your eyes on Jesus and keep the faith. Now I'd like to pray with you. God, our Father, holy art thou. Thy name is holy. Thou art holy, Lord Jesus. There is none like you, Lord Jesus. You are the one. You are the way. You are the light. You are the life. No one can come to you but through you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on that cross. I thank you for the stripes you took that healed my body, Lord Jesus. I thank you for all the things you've done for us and all the things you're going to do for us. I know that you think of it, Jesus says, just now. But we are bound by time, so we think of it as past, now, and the future. Lord Jesus, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you most especially for your blood that watches us white as snow, which you shed upon that cross, upon that tree. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you dearly. You are my God. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. There is nothing that come, can come against me that you cannot take care of. You are bigger than any of my problems that I will ever face, Lord Jesus. May his hand be upon you. May you be under his wings at all times. May you know that the Lord is with you always. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. Lord Jesus, those that have had their family members die, I pray that you rest your comforting spirit upon them, Lord Jesus. Those that are sick now, Lord Jesus, I pray that you will touch them with the Holy Ghost, with the power, the healing power of the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. Any of those that are bound, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would loose them. Take their binds up their their bonds and chains off them, Lord Jesus. Let them see the light. Lord Jesus, any of that are oppressed or depressed or obsessed by demonic powers of fear, of sickness, of illness, or any such like, Lord Jesus, I cast them out in your name by the power and authority of your name, Lord Jesus. You are the mighty one. There is nothing that you cannot do. I hope to see you in the coming days when we can all get together again. I know we're going to sort of be separated at first until this thing gets over, but God is going to get us through it. He's going to get us through it, and I miss all of you. I long to see you again. Thank you very much for letting me come into your house and talk to you. In Jesus' name. Hey, this is Pastor Chris and Vonda Sowards. We just wanted to say thanks for watching today. If you liked watching our services, I know you'll love coming and worshiping with us here in Charleston. To find out more information, please head to our website at theopendoor.church.